Hello, and welcome back to the 2020-21 Vassar Athletics Awards Ceremony. Once again, I'm Amy Canfield, Assistant Director of Athletics for Communications, and it is my extreme honor to present to you the Matthew Vassar Outstanding Career Award from a men's team. Before we announce this year's winners, I'm pleased to introduce you to all of our top four finalists for this year's award. From men's tennis, David Gandam. From men's track and field, Aiden Gann. From baseball, Pat Fitzgerald. And from men's fencing, Abram Gregory. Thank you guys so much and welcome. It's such a pleasure to have you all here. This award is given annually to one male and one female senior student athlete in recognition of outstanding athletics performance in a Vassar Athletics Department sponsored sport over the course of their career at Vassar. This award recognizes athletics excellence in the context of team history and the current team and the individual's performance in the context of league, conference, regional, and or national competition. Each of our top four finalists has made an incredible impact in their sports, not just this past season during a global pandemic, but throughout their entire careers here at Vassar. I'd like to briefly read a portion of their nomination, which was submitted by their coaches. When David first arrived at Vassar, he was the number two singles player, which didn't last long as he moved into the number one spot later in the season, a position he has held ever since. His discipline has pushed him and the team to the next level. He has worked so hard and it has translated into incredible results in his matches. A 2021 All Liberty League first team in singles and second team in doubles honoree, he went from a losing record as the number one player in his freshman and sophomore year to an incredible winning record as a junior and senior at number one singles and doubles, helping the squad into the Liberty League semifinals this year. The team is stronger having had him as a captain this year, not just with his words, but also through his actions. Even though David had an incredibly busy schedule, he always found time to volunteer, including with the Vassar After School Tutoring Program through the Vassar College Urban Education Initiative that connects Vassar to the City of Poughkeepsie Public School District. Putting forth incredible sportsmanship on and off the court, David leaves a lasting legacy at Vassar, which always saw him put his team first. Aiden has been an absolute dominant force on the track his entire career as a brewer. While the pandemic robbed him of the opportunity to compete for the win at NCAAs in the 800 meters, his career has had enough statistics to show he is one of the greatest track athletes we have ever had at Vassar. A three-time Liberty League champion in the 800 meters and an NCAA qualifier, he became the highest placing brewer at NCAAs in the 800 meters as a sophomore, just missing out on the finals by 0.01 seconds, finishing 11th after entering the meet ranked 20th overall. While the COVID pandemic most certainly stole Aiden's greatest races, he still stands as the third fastest 800 meter and 1500 meter runner in school history based off of his sophomore year. He is undefeated in the Liberty League and again is Vassar's highest placing NCAA 800 meter runner of all time. Pat transformed himself into one of the best pitchers in the Liberty League and at Vassar by virtue of his exceptional work ethic and even demeanor. A 2019 Iron Brewer Award recipient and captain this season, he powered into his senior season posting 10.64 strikeouts per nine innings, which was on pace to be the highest single season percentage of all time at Vassar. Pat dominated hitters this spring, striking out more batters per nine innings than anyone has ever done in the school's history. A 2021 All Liberty League second team selection, he gave our team a chance to win every time he pitched. Off the field, Pat was a key figure in our community service efforts. Whether it was a coat drive, making sandwiches for Dutchess County Outreach Food Pantry, or raising money and awareness for Gift of Life, he has upheld our team and department standards as well as anyone ever here on our team, which is one of the reasons we feel so hopeful for the next few years and are so proud of all he has done for our baseball family and for the athletics department. Abram stepped onto the Vassar campus as a USA Fencing C-ranked epi fencer, but departs as an A-ranked fencer. He has worked hard for his team, teammates, and also himself during his career, which includes 100 career epi victories. He has been an outstanding representative of our program, winning the NEIFC individual epi title in 2020 and coming within only a couple of bout victories from qualifying for NCAA championships. In addition to his success with the team, Abram established himself as a familiar face to nearly everyone across the athletics department, 
serving as a facilities worker for countless contests and desk shifts during his career. Needless to say, Abram has helped to make both Vassar fencing and Vassar athletics a better place, and we will miss him as he moves on with what will certainly be a very bright future. And now you know why they are our top four finalists. Incredible words for all of our honorees and an incredible legacy and career that they leave behind. And at this time, I'd actually like to hear from our honorees with a little bit of a Q&A. We're gonna start with David. You've had an incredible career at Vassar with a lot of ups, some downs, and a bit of pandemic on the side. Tell me about a moment that you feel sums up how to best describe your career as a brewer. Um, probably, uh, I kind of just picked my, my favorite moment and the moment I hope defines my career the best. Uh, it was probably the week uh, I won National Player of the Week. Um, when we played uh, Skidmore and Clark that weekend. Skidmore is always a really big match for us um, and we had them at home. Uh, and as you mentioned, I, I did a lot of failing, especially my, my freshman year. And um, it was especially against the, uh, the kid I played at, at one singles. I lost to him a couple of times and, and beating him had been a big goal of mine uh, for, a, for a while. Um, when I came in, people kind of told me, uh, that these kids are really good and we were kind of we were scared of them a little bit and I think I think winning that match um, I tried to show the program that we can compete on on that level and we're just as good as them and uh, yeah that's probably my my favorite moment at Vassar. Absolutely hey when you're able to finally get over that hurdle and beat somebody that has taken you down before there's never a greater feeling. Thank you so much. Um, next, let's go to Aiden. So while your career might not have featured as much running as you would have hoped for due to the pandemic over the past few years, how do you feel your career has shaped you for your post faster days? Yeah, um, you know, like you said, definitely not as much running as I had hoped. Uh, like you mentioned, my sophomore year nationals, uh, missing out on all American, uh, my friend had calculated and it turned out to be like seven centimeters. Um, that I missed uh, the qualifying by, which was just like, it's haunted me till this day for sure. Um, and it definitely wasn't the last time I thought I'd be able to qualify. Um, but then considering like the devastation and pain that this pandemic brought upon, um, like our season getting canceled seemed kind of uh, less important relevant to like other issues, um, but it was definitely a huge bummer. Um, and yeah, so my career was definitely important for shaping me into like the whole person I am today. I would say uh, I learned how to uh, push myself to the best uh, version of me I could be, um, which is something that I can take and apply to like every other aspect of my life. Um, and yeah, hopefully the memory of the, the pain of the last 50 meters of, of the 800 will remind me of my capability for all types of trials in the future, um, but yeah. I think it's important though, like you said, you know, you look back on your sophomore year with, with the 800 as being a great achievement, but you also recognize the things that you were able to achieve despite the pandemic and how that grew you. So it, it's a great realization, even though it's a lot of heartache in between. So thank you so much, Aiden. Uh, next, let's go to Pat. Um, you know, much like your other finalists, you've had to endure the loss of a season and a normal season. Uh, you know, you've lost those in your career as well. What helped drive you to be so successful despite the challenges that were thrown at you over the course of your career? Yeah, you know, similarly to everybody else, it was, it was really tough to lose a season, especially right in the middle of it. Um, last year is definitely a shock. Um, and, you know, obviously thinking of things in a larger context, there are more important things going on. But for me, you know, I saw it as an opportunity to kind of put two years into one season, um, you know, two years of development and, and practice. And at the same time, there was a lot of uncertainty there because we didn't know if we would get that last season. And, you know, I feel really grateful that we did. And, I, you know, the, the feeling of success in, in athletics and in life is it's just so addicting. And, you know, once you have a good moment on the field, you want to do everything you can to continue to, to chase that moment and, you know, be successful over and over again. So I think that was what drove me and, and just having a great support system, you know, whether it's my coaches, my parents, my teammates, my, my trainers, you know, everybody in my corner wanting to see me succeed just made it that much, that much easier to put in the hard work and also that much 
more enjoyable, you know, when I, when I saw myself and my teammates succeed. And I'm really grateful for that. Absolutely. And, you know, like you said, like, like your, your, your fellow, your fellow finalists here, when you've had to experience that loss of a season, having that team to rally around and those people to be with you is, is equally as important as not if, if more than playing the season to have those people around you. So excellent. Thank you so much, Pat. Uh, and finally, last but not least, um, Abram. So your coach mentioned in his nomination that you came into Vassar as a C-ranked fencer and you're leaving as an A-ranked fencer. For you, what were the biggest factors in you attaining this that kind of success in your brewer's career? Yeah, so so from, from the get-go, um, you know, I had this understanding that I, like, I, I lack a lot of the physical factors of, or the, like the physical, like, attributes of, like, fencers that were successful at the level that I want to be, like, men's epic fencers tend to be like six feet tall, six one, like really with a lot of acceleration and a lot of flexibility. And as like anyone who's seen me in like the weight room or the training room can, can attest, I have no mobility and I'm five eight. So like, there's always this, this chance that I had this like understanding that I had to be like a lot smarter and like devote as many minutes to getting reps as I could. So like my freshman year, I was, I was like a backup for, for pretty much the entire year, but I got to learn from like a lot of good, like upperclassmen, like John Alberstein and, and George Whiteside and Rose Halsey Vincent. Um, and I was pretty much watching film every minute that I was not in class or at practice. Like my, my team gives out awards at the end of the year and I won one for most likely to be caught watching film. Um, so it was pretty much just like getting as many reps as I physically could uh, for those first two years. And at the end of my sophomore year, um, I, I came to realize that the, the world number 12 uh, men's FAS actually was the, was the brother of a women's volleyball player at Vassar. So I kind of like messaged him on Instagram and name dropped her and was like, here's what I'm about. Like, here are my goals. And and my resume, can I, can I come train with you? Which is like a huge Hail Mary. Cause like, who am I? You know, I'm just like, like a, like a D3 bench warmer, pretty much hitting up a guy who just qualified for the Olympics this year. Um, but it worked. <laughs> he was like, sure. So, so I trained at the, at the New York athletic club for a summer. Um, and I trained with like the U S men's and women's national team and, and everything just kind of like synergized after summer of that, like my junior year, I pretty much took so many of like the skills and like tips and tricks that, that you really don't get unless you're talking to some of the best of the best. And I like developed a really strong relationship with coach Reed and was like hitting the weight room, like, like three plus times a week, which, which, you know, I know, I know I'm in a room with an iron brewer here, but for a fencer, that's saying something, you know? Um, and I pretty much just everything synergized, like whether it was, you know, the, the fundamentals that I got to work with, with some of my assistant coaches as an underclassman. Um, and then just like a lot of the incredibly high end reps I got um, with like some of the folks on the national team, I was able to just start like blowing past like a lot of our D1 competition because the funky thing about fencing is, D3 fences, D1, and, and usually we're just warm-ups for them, but that really wasn't the case for me. Um, so whether it was like the, the stuff I learned from the national team or working with Coach Reed, everything just kind of like synergized to help me like pick up my A from the U.S. Fencing Association, like come sixth out of 76 at our opener my uh, my junior year, and then, and then win the conference title individually at home, which is amazing. So yeah. Absolutely. So I mean, the, the, the basic theme is that you weren't, you weren't willing to settle with with what you came in with. And really, I think that's pretty much a common, uh, a common trait for all four of you, to be perfectly honest. Thank you so much for your wonderful responses. But um, as a surprise, we're not quite done yet. Um, so I do have a bonus question for all of you um, that I'd love to, to have you answer. Um, and that question is, what have you learned about yourself over the last four years at Vassar as a student, an athlete, and an individual? Uh, let's go ahead and start with Aiden. Yeah, so, you know, I definitely went into to Vassar not knowing what I want to spend the rest of my life doing. Um, so, like, on the student side of things, you know, throughout my time, I've, I've definitely found a true passion in studying astrophysics. Um, and I think to complement that, like, my, my time as an athlete here has helped me just believe in myself and help me develop the kind of persistence uh, I'll, I'll need to take with me through um, grad school and, and future academia and whatever that path brings me. Um, yeah. Absolutely, thank you so much. Uh, let's go to Pat. I think the, the first thing that comes to mind when I, when I get this question, and I think Abram, I feel the same way is that I got a lot better at my sport than I ever thought I was going to be. Um, I think that's a testament to my hard work and also support I've received from from everybody, you know, in my corner over the years. And then similarly to what Aiden said, you know, it's finding a passion in, in sport, you know, helps you transfer that passion into, into other aspects of your life. And, you know, that's something that, 
that I hope to continue, you know, for the rest of my life. And I also know now that I want baseball to be a part of my identity in some respect for the rest of my life, you know, whether it's just being a fan or coaching or anything like that. So, yeah, I think that over these four years, you know, my decision to, to play, to play sports in college has absolutely been validated. And I'm, I'm really glad that, that I made that decision. Excellent. Oh my, thank you so much, Pat. I appreciate it. Um, let's go to David. Uh, yeah, one thing I learned uh, as, a, as an athlete, especially during the, the pandemic, um, was how much I really loved the sport, um, how much I love being an athlete. Uh, with, with each passing month, sometimes it was frustrating where it'd be like, oh, I've put in three months, four months, or seven months of work. And uh, still the last time I played was March 2020, and I don't know if I'll ever get to play again. And, uh, and I think through that, I kind of learned that uh, I wasn't necessarily working for a result or, or for a win. It was more because I love what I'm doing. Um, and, and sometimes work is just good. It's just good in, in and of itself. Um, and I'll definitely take, take that with me uh, past, past Vassar. Um, and, and aside from that, I think over my past four years, going to a challenging academic school, um, balancing being a student athlete, it's really uh, helped me learn to deal with adversity and, and failure and how to, how to bounce back from those things and, and to embrace those things. If you're not failing, you're not trying something that's, that's hard enough or you're not chasing a hard enough goal. And so. Absolutely. I, I think college teaches you the best and worst parts of yourself and helps you get better. Thank you so much, David. And last but certainly not least, uh, Abram. Yeah. So, so the two things that I've definitely learned are that, um, or that I like, I want to occupy like a, a huge variety of roles and like wear many hats, like, you know, when it comes to like careers. And, and I've also learned like what it, what it truly means to, what it truly means to bend and not break. So like as a student, like I was a double major and I studied a bunch of languages. Um, so, you know, like reading all these different texts from different like literary traditions and languages has like helped me be able to juggle like a lot of topics and concentration simultaneously. Um, and, and my experience with the athletics department was like pretty similar. Um, like you met, like, like Bruce mentioned in his nomination, like I worked in the weight room and working at the AFC, like I, like I staffed and cleaned places. Like I, like I built things, like I pretty much like redid the fencing locker room. Um, I like set up at, like I COVID proofed everything ahead of the summer. So like I helped build the weight room out in the barn, which was like one of the most fun things I've ever done. Um, so between like, you know, my employment and participation with, with the athletics community and, and like everything in the classroom, it's that I want to do like a lot, like going to Matt to, to like, I'm pursuing a master's in English and I hope to do a PhD after that, but I'm also like simultaneously training to be a strength coach and I coach fencing right now. And, you know, I think one career would be, would be too few for me. And I definitely learned that at Vassar. And then and as for the, the bending and not breaking, like um, I had to just deal with like a lot of setbacks over my athletics career. Um, like I had three concussions, which is like a really scary time, um, especially in a sport like fencing, because like no one is accustomed to that. And I pretty much did my entire junior season on like a torn shoulder labrum, like in my weapon arm. Um, and, uh, which was really tough because it was like a shoulder ligament and the FA is the heaviest weapon. And it happened in the middle of the season, but I was on such like a roll that it was like, I just gotta, just gotta keep doing this. Cause like, I don't know the next time that I'm going to be beating like D1 athletes and, and training with world team members and, and, and making a run for NCAAs against, you know, against like some of the best of the best. Um, so yeah, so th those are definitely the two things I've learned are that I wanna pursue like a variety of things. And, and I also just know really what it means to just kind of make things work. Absolutely, thank you so much. Guys, congratulations on outstanding careers. The four of you are truly and absolutely worthy of being Matthew Vassar, outstanding career athletes. Um, Truly, thank you so much for your honest words today and thank you so much for being here today. It is now time to unveil the winner of the 2020-21 Matthew Vassar Outstanding Career Award from a men's team. And the award goes to David Gandum, men's tennis. I'm very honored by this nomination uh, and award by, by Vassar Athletics. Um, I'd like to thank Athletics. It's been a great four years representing the school. Uh, I'd like to thank all of my teammates and, and coaches over the past four years, especially um, the ones in my grade, Nick, and my doubles partner, Adam. Um, I'd like to thank all the trainers, um, especially uh, Max, uh, and obviously my, my family, uh, my dad and my sister who have been on this tennis journey with me for the past 20 years. Um, finally, a uh, big thank you to uh, Coach Tina, um, 
you believed in me more than I believed in myself and that's meant so much. It's been a blast to play under you uh, in this program for the past two and a half years. I'm so excited to see uh, what we do in the future. Go Brewers!